what really pushed you to be a game developer? Well, that's for a very simple reason. At the beginning, when I stopped, now when I went out of my uh, out of college, mm-hmm. and I began, I started my higher studies, like uh, going to faculty and stuff like that. I decided that I didn't want to make uh, regular work uh, that would be something uh, I'm not interested in. Right. And uh, since I was a child, I was, uh, of course, playing a lot of video games, especially action games and versus fighting games. Mm -hmm. So I had in mind to uh, begin developing games, which I I did, like, pretty... um, Late because usually people, good game developer begins to make games since they are children. Like sometimes they begin when they are like seven, eight, right. maybe a bit later around twelve. But for me, like I really started making video game for real when I was like twenty, twenty one. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so I made this decision uh, and I uh, was uh, I started looking for a school. Um, happily, I mean, yeah, happily in France we have three very good schools. Mm-hmm. Uh, the thing is that I was not a very good student at school, so mm-hmm. I couldn't I couldn't get the public one. It was impossible for me. Right, right. So I decided to go for the private one. Uh, but it went pretty smooth. Like I went to a school that's called Isar Digital. Okay. And there I learned a lot about game design. Uh, the only thing that they are not teaching you um, as game designer is like technical aspect. Like you don't learn a lot about code or uh, like it's pretty much generalist. So when I was there, I started looking for some uh, trainee uh, trainership. I mean, on some jobs, mm-hmm. and every job I could find, they were always related to uh, combat design and to. Uh, very action game oriented because as I said the only real experience I had was uh, very general like about game design but I was not good at coding I was not good at making graphs I was just good at theory right yeah, and that, where that, was that's what you were that's what you were taught yeah but what I discovered is that I managed to find some jobs like in action games, not because I was a student or whatever, but it's all because of the huge past as a player I had. Like when I was, since I was nine or ten, I was already taking part into some video game tournaments, especially on Super Smash Bros. series or Street Fighter. And I, I didn't, I, I didn't notice since uh, before I was twenty, but it gave me like a lot of. A good knowledge about games, how they work. Even if I didn't know how they were really working, like uh, it was inherent. Like it came to me. Like everything was clear. Like it's like when you are doing a movement, like you don't know how you do it. Uh, like when you are trying to, to score a goal, like uh, I don't know how you, you said that, but in basketball, you are just shooting at the at the basket. Absolutely. Yeah. And so some people are just scoring, but they don't know exactly how their muscles are working. So it was the same with me for with game design, combat design. Yeah. Um, so I changed some jobs. I mean, like, three of them, I think, uh, working on combat systems and especially implementing, and there I made a lot of progress, especially on um, uh, scripting, coding, and video game in general. Uh, so finally, I became rather, like, more, uh, not like a game designer, which is working on theory, but rather a technical designer. I mean... Uh, I was much more uh, employed to to build the game than think it. Exactly. Um, after that, I went to Poland for a job uh, that was offered to me for working on a massively multiplayer uh, fighting games on on uh, Android and iOS. Oh, awesome! It's called Blade Lord. It's a game. I'm not very proud of this game, but uh, I'm proud. Of, I'm, I, I would say I'm proud of what I achieved on it. Yeah, but still. Mm-hmm. So after, after that, I was already something like four or five years experience, which I think is a lot. But uh, on, on my opinion, what I had achieved until then was like crap. Mm-hmm. I was not really. Uh, I was not really um, proud of any of the, of the game. Uh, 
I did in itself. Like, because I don't know, I I I cannot I couldn't find the real reason of that. Uh, maybe it's because. Maybe it's because um, I was not satisfied with the game. Uh, the thing is that I was not satisfied at all. Yeah. Um, one day, I was wandering on um, on internet searching for a job because I had in mind to to leave my current one, which was not um, satisfying at all anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I decided, okay, now uh, I want to work for only for interesting projects and for good teams. Uh, if I have to, uh, if I have to make video games just for money, uh, I'm I'm not gonna fulfill my, the promise I made to myself. Like mm-hmm. I'm gonna leave what I'm doing. Even if I'm working video game, it would be boring, and I would just lose my, my just w- would lose myself. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I started uh, watching. And there was a lot of company I was inter- interested in, of course, and I sent some. Um, some CV, but the problem is that I was already implanted in mobile gaming, not really in console gaming. Even, even if all the games I made on mobile were like much more on philosophy, they were like console oriented, but still. Right. And there is a day I see on a French website, like a um, French employment, employment website, I see an announcement from a company called The Game Baker. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I knew them because they were working on a game that I was playing before on iOS. It's Combo Crew. So yeah, yep, yep, yep. It's a score, it's a score based um, beat them up on on iOS and Android. And I, I pretty much named their game, so uh, I knew them. And, but I also knew them before of that because I've been working for a company called Eggball, which were making some uh, beat them up game on mobile too. And then they, they they used to know each other those two companies. So I was like, okay, uh, yes, and I even remember my lead back in days, my lead at Egg Bowl, uh, once I asked him, like, for which company would you like to work if you could choose? And he told me, accepted the actual one, like uh, the current one, which was our company, saying, yeah. I would like to, to work for Game Bakers. And at this time, I didn't know those guys. Like, I just knew, I knew them after with Combo Crew. Oh, that's but still, awesome. I see I see this announcement on the internet, and it was written something like we are looking for a game designer who's gonna take care of designing um, gameplay loops, pattern, and inter- integrating in game engine um, all things for a beat them up game. Uh, it was like a, yeah. in, bra- in bracket, it was noted like a Bayonetta, Devil May Cry stuff. Like yeah, that. it was like a match made in heaven. Yeah, but the thing is that it was a, um, a trainer. They were looking, they were looking for a trainee, and I was obviously not a trainee anymore. I see. So I sent a, a message, but it was really crappy. Uh, I <laughs> sent that a thousand of times. I think this was my main uh, problem uh, back in days. Like I was very vain, and I've been vain because um, I was like, okay, they are just a little company. I was yeah. like. I don't really want this job, but I'm going to give it a try because, uh, you know, it's like uh, I, I sent it because I needed to uh, reach, to uh, comfort myself and to be like, okay, I'm looking for a new job. But I really sent a, a crappy a crappy message. <laughs> and I, uh, every time people are asking me, I, I said the same. Like, I, I really sent something like, hi, I think we can get to work together to yeah. come smile. <laughs> like that. Send. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And I was very surprised because the next day I get uh, I get a mail from Emric, which is my uh, creative director on Fury, mm-hmm. saying, "Okay, maybe we can have a talk. Let's let's Skype each other." I was yeah. like, "Okay, this is strange. I'm not a, I'm not a trainee. I sent a very shitty uh, <laughs> yeah. message." But after that, I understood why because uh, Game Baker, they, when they are hunting some new. Uh, some new guy for working for them. They are not looking at your CV. I mean, not not looking at what really looking at what you are sending to them, like um, what you are writing. They are directly looking at your portfolio and checking what you did in the past. Exactly. And the thing I think is that happily for me, I was fitting exactly what they were looking for, and which is kind of a rare profile. 
Mm-hmm. Like I was doing exactly what they want. I've been doing for four or five years exactly what they wanted me to do, mm-hmm. which is a lot of experience. I mean, and uh, in the they were asking for a trainee, so of course they were receiving a lot of mail from trainees. So they decided instead of taking a trainee to take me. Yeah. Um, and I, I think, in, yeah, that's how it, it just happened like that. So I got yeah. the job. They told me, okay, we are going to make a, a two-week test, so you are going to come with us. And, no, we are going to send you a test, so you are going to check and do it. And the next day they said, okay, no, finally, we are not going to make you have a test. You are just going to come and, uh, and be tested uh, on site mm-hmm. uh, in the south of France. Uh, I understood later that uh, if I didn't have to make the test, it's also because of uh, uh, me working in the past for the other company, Egg Bowl, and exactly. I know that uh, they've been talking to each other. Yeah. Well, uh, that's how it started. Like, I went to video game middle. Like, it was it just happened uh, like that. But uh, at the beginning, uh, if I if I if I look backward. I think uh, it was all a, a streak of chance, like of luck, I mean, mm-hmm. because I really was not well prepared to get, because I, I went on those studies that were like very um, generalist. Yeah. And most of my colleague today, the one I was uh, in that school with now, most, for most of them, they are not working video game. And for the, there is a part like two, we are like four of us that are having good position as game designers and being real developer. And few others are just a QA tester, you know. Mm-hmm. So exactly. I consider myself lucky and I really think it's just about luck. So the real answer to your question, mm-hmm. how did I enter uh, the game development? I would say it's luck. Yeah, that, I, I've, I've found that uh, a lot of the people I've talked to that got into jobs uh, of in the creative field, it's, it's all through opportunities, and um, whether or not you take an opportunity will lead to something completely different, uh, oh, much bigger. Yes, that's true. But there's something uh, I, I forgot to mention. Mm-hmm. At the beginning, of, um, you know... Uh, when I saw the announce of um, Game Baker, I was like, "Okay, it seems nice, but I'm not too much interested." And oh, after okay. our call, our after our call, Emric sent me uh, what we call in the video game a, a, um, um, a fake uh, gameplay footage. Okay. So it was the, the it was the level of the, the hand, like the the knight, but yeah. it was fake gameplay. It was like you were seeing this character. Uh, Walking on the path, then fighting the guy. It was a, like three minutes video they used to to sell the project to Sony. Oh, that's really interesting. And, it, uh, and it's, a, it's a video uh, that's never put online. Um, nobody saw it except the the team. But I can tell you that the result, I mean, this the result of the final game is like extremely close to this video. Really? Yeah. Wow, this that's is, uh, that's really surprising. This is, this is really. Um, Incredible! Like usually, you're using this kind of gameplay footage to to sell a project, uh-huh. but here, like the vision was so clear that at the end it was looking almost like that. But still, I saw this video and I was I had some other um, um, interview with other um, studios. Like I remember, I had something after with CD Project, or, like big oh, company, cool. so on. Yeah, one with. Um, and uh, when I saw this video from uh, Emric, I just cut off all the um, uh, all the chatters with uh, all companies because it was so awesome. Like I really wanted to work on that project. It was a small team, like of 15 people, but uh, the project looked really awesome. So I took it and I just went to South of France to to begin working on it. came onto the team um, after after Fury was already uh, already in a, a, a blooming idea. Um, it was uh, it was even like the prototyping was over. Like everything, almost everything was ready to be integrated. 
like the preconception was done, the conception was done. Uh, we were entering production at this moment. Yeah, wow. Uh, what were the what were the inspirations on Fury? Uh, what what were your inspirations um, for uh, really nailing down the combat system that uh, ended up um, being in the game for all of us? Well, on my side, so. Just to, to remind it, I'm what people call a combat designer. So mm-hmm. I'm taking care of combat systems and games. Yeah. Or what it's like, it's impossible for you to see me working on something that is not related to combat. Mm-hmm. <coughs> You're going to see me, for example, on, on AIs or uh, patterns, or, yeah, or um, enemies uh, or combat systems, but you will never see me on level design or something like that, for example. Exactly. So, when I got on Fury, um, as I said, most of like everything was kind of ready for integration. Mm-hmm. We had the, the character um, capacities, we had the, the engine, the tools to, to integrate things. Uh, there was something that was missing in the gameplay, which was like the, the vision. Like the, um, it was not clearly defined yet. Like I mean. Right. At the beginning, Fury was a game in which you had infinite life. Oh. Every time, every time you were dying, you were just coming back at your max life, and uh-huh. you were continuing. Wow. So it's not only me, but I contributed. As um, I mean, Emric and me, we worked on. Uh, like I was making the fights, of course, but we worked on make uh, put more stakes to the fights. That's how we, um, for example, decided to give three lives to the player, and each time he, he, he beats a phase of a boss, he gets back one, for example. Also, when you parry, uh, when you parry, you gain yeah. some health back, which I find really interesting. This was already pre- uh, here when I came. Okay, but, I see. But what I said about uh, life system is a follow-up of that idea. It's like we want the play, the, the main idea between game, uh, behind sorry, the gameplay of Fury is that whenever, uh, no, I mean, whatever is the situation, if you are still alive, you can make a comeback. Yeah. If you yeah. are about to die and you are like, okay, now I'm hot and I'm gonna exactly. focus, you can just get 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 back from the deep. Exactly. You are able to to come back. You know, to come back with three lives and maximum life. Mm-hmm. That was a, one of the stakes of Fury. At the beginning, it was not intended to be especially a hard game. But we um, we stated after test that making it hard were like the, um, multiplying the satisfaction of all that gameplay philosophy, you know? Yeah. That was pretty much like that. So, I, I, I mean, I, I guess you kind of already answered... Uh my next question, but was dip- so was difficulty ever a concern? Uh, like QA testing, were people finding that the game was too difficult uh, or too easy? In fact, um, the difficulty of the game. So there is once. No, the game is not really difficult. What I mean is that when we started playtesting Fury. Uh, mm-hmm. Most of people were not beating the first uh, boss after two hours. The game oh. was very hard. Yes, wow. it was hard because uh, I, I think uh, it's against it's again a, a side effect of my vanity. You know, like I was vain. Like mm-hmm. people have has, has to get that good when I was like, if it's not as hard, it's gonna be easy. But it was not right. Uh, yeah. yeah. So for for months. Uh, not, uh, it was very difficult for playtester to beat bosses. Like uh, there is moment after, um, like I remember Emery telling me like uh, we are going to tweak it for the next playtest. Uh, it's going to be better. And playtest after playtest, people were not getting better. So we were like really concerned. It was a critical moment for me. Like we have to um, be more uh, generous with the player. Yeah. Because in fact. What became the Furrier mode is uh, was the main fi- philosophy of the normal mode. But, oh um, wow, really? Equivalent difficulty, yes. Oh wow, that's super interesting. I did. That's crazy. But you cannot. 
then, so we continued playtesting, and we also um, noticed that the main problem with the game was not that it was hard, it's that people were not understanding it. And this is still the problem today. Really? Uh, yeah. Like, people, when they understand how things work, how to parry, uh, what's the, um, the way to... Um, like that they cannot button map, they have to be patient, they have to counter attack, they have to be, uh, you know, it's very attention. rare. You have to pay it's, attention to what's going on around you. That's one thing, but the other thing is, as I said, today, nowadays, in the video game context, like right now, in our, um, in our time, mm -hmm. uh, people are not used to, um, to be patient, and to yeah. and to to and to to think that they got used since uh, 2010 around like that um, to a new vision of gaming like installed by companies like Ubisoft in which like you it, which is not a bad thing I mean uh, yeah, but they, yeah, they, they, sure. they opened the they, they made the range of gamer wider by just uh, making it more accessible and less demanding mm -hmm. so people now now there I used to um, to button mash and to to try to just pass in fury one of the specs that was that is pa part of the philosophy of the gameplay is like if the player is button mashing yeah. pushing one button uh, he shouldn't be able to to, to win. and this <coughs> thing I remember this is, can you take the to the window? this is something um, that is pretty visible because Every time my boss, uh, my um, director was testing the game, I remember, he was first testing what happened if he button mash, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah that, that, that makes, that makes, um, that makes total sense too, because, uh, in, in like beat em up games, that, that is mostly what you're doing. I, I, w I would consider, I would consider Fury a, uh, I, I don't know if I would, exactly use the term beat em up but it has those aspects like like god hand uh for example um where where you have to there is button mashing but you have to do it in at a certain time when yes. when it calls for it that's when you do it but if you keep doing it you are you are going to fail miserably and uh also fury the whole the whole system of fury for me is based on uh, the defense system yeah. you have uh, enemies that are really defending like they are not absorbing it there's none of them that is absorbing it mm -hmm. like they are really defending like if you are not um, attacking at the right time it's going to defend like do something not just absorb the hit and uh, counter attack no it's going to sidestep or it's going to block or it's going right. to do something right. like that and um, the inspiration of that philosophy, because I, uh, I didn't really answer your question earlier, uh, like the kind of game that me as player, uh, I mean, uh, my director will, will talk for himself. But on my side, there is game, I've been inspired by games like Super Punch Out, for example. Yeah, oh yeah. Which is for me still nowadays a monument of a combat design. Like, this is the game you should play if you want to understand how to make a, a balance system and how to make a, make a boss fight. Mm -hmm. uh, there is, yeah, this is pretty, the game that inspired me the, the, the most. On our podcast last week, we actually talked about, uh, because I was writing down um, questions for you, and I thought about this because it's been brought up a lot nowadays, especially, is... Uh, how do you feel about like difficulty options in games like this? Uh, like I know people have brought up uh, the idea, and it, it's it's crazy to me that there should be a difficulty option in say Dark Souls. Uh, so how how do you see like how do you see a difficulty option detracting <laughs> from an experience? Because uh, in, in my opinion, if if you added a difficulty uh, option to Dark Souls, I think that kind of ruins the experience and the tension but that that, that that's just I, I could be crazy so I, I'm just I'm just wondering how uh, how difficulty options in games that are supposed to be difficult uh, how you perceive that 
this is going to be a long answer because there is a lot to say. Uh, yeah, yeah, to, yeah. For your information, we made a, um, uh, like one year ago in a, in a France, in a, one of the, in a convention in France, uh, we made a, a talk of two hours about this. Oh, really? Uh, oh, stream. That's, that's yes. Exciting. It was with uh, it was with me. The, also, I don't know if you know the game which is called uh, Absolver. Oh, absolutely! Okay. Yes. Uh, so, one yeah. that, that combat system is so awesome. Well, the, the the director of this game was here to talk about uh, games difficulty with me, and we, we talked about it for one hour and a half, two hours. <laughs> so this is a wide um, topic, but just to summarize what on my side and it's only my opinion, what I do think about it, mm -hmm. it's like. Um, there's difficulty de um, difficulty system depends on the vision of your game exactly. there is some games like for I give you for example The Witcher 3 yep. uh, White yeah, Hunt yeah. the difficulty system here is used to open the game and make it wider to the greater audience mm -hmm. like on my side this kind of game if there is a maximum level of difficulty I play it in maximum level of difficulty because for me, this is how I want to play. Yeah, right, but right, right. there is an easy, normal, hard, uh, and very hard mode for so any, any any kind of player can play the game, you know, without being frustrated. Mm -hmm. The thing is that usually in that kind of systems, um, there is only uh, statistics that are taken into account. Like in Witcher, for example, if you are playing in hard mode, you are just gonna get less XP, so you exactly. will have you will have to grind more. You yeah. will have um, less less HPs. I don't know exactly what you're but uh, it, I don't know if you receive more damage or if you have less HPs. Uh, but the result is that you're gonna die faster. Yeah. yeah less right to to, to, to mistake. Um, but this is not the the way I prefer to make a difficulty system because for me, just adjusting uh, variables for me, it's um, yeah, it's the common way to do it. Like uh, everybody does it. It's less interesting. It's it's just boosting numbers where what you should be doing is making difficulty contextual. Um, I mean, for me, the vision of that, uh, this is per probably not the, the real vision of that, but for me, what it witnessed that the vision is like, uh, we want to be open to the wider audience. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah, yeah. There's a second kind of um, difficulty levels, mm -hmm. which are games like, for example, Beautiful Joe or um, Dark Souls. It's like that. Mm -hmm. Only one. Uh, there is only one uh, level of difficulty. Mm -hmm. Because the game is tweaked and made with a vision to be demanding, and it's perfectly tweaked and tuned uh, to be uh, challenging and demanded for you in one difficulty mode. Exactly. And this is at the base of the experience, for example, in Dark Souls. What people want to... Uh, what the vision is to make you achieve to get better by your own. Mm -hmm. uh, there is... A, in most games, you are like, okay, I'm, 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 I, 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 I can't do it, so I'm just reducing difficulty, or I'm going to grind and get more level. In Dark Souls, of course, you can grind a bit, but it's not going to be... Um, this is going to just help a bit. It's not going to make you overpowered. Whatever exactly. happens, you will have to play to find a way to play the game right. If you don't play it right, you're just going to get wrecked um, every mm -hmm. time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, there's something... Uh, the thing I admire so much about uh, Dark Souls is that... Um, it, yes, it has this atmosphere that uh, adds to the tension... But the difficulty also adds to the tension um, in yeah. a nuanced way, and I find that that level of game design extraordinarily uh, difficult to reach. Like that, that's just—it's incredible how much the difficulty adds to the game uh, in that regards. So, this was for me the two main way of doing. <laughs> A difficulty level, then you have others like a uh, special one like God End. You know, if you are getting, if you are playing well, the difficulty increase. I'm not going to talk about that, but I, that's the th that's the third uh, way of doing a game. Mm -hmm. Difficulty for me. Scaling, and, for, yeah. and 
No, I'm not talking about scaling, but it's uh, m making a system that's going to go in the direction of the vision of the game. You know what I mean? Yeah, in, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and for me, Fury belongs to that category. I would agree, yeah. Because if in Fury we make, uh, for example, in Dark Souls, uh, no, I mean, if in Fury we give you uh, 10 square of life, which is pretty long, like you can get hit like 10 or 5 or 10 times, which is a lot. In Dark Souls, you can get hit one or two times most of the time. Yeah. Um, and we are giving you, you know, this system that makes you able to come back and get your life back. It's because it's in the line, it's in, it's in the, it's the vector of our vision. Like we want to create this, um, like in, for example, in those um, manga when the, when the main character is uh, he, he's, uh, about to die and then he becomes a super saiyajin, like in Dragon yeah. Ball. He's about yeah, to lose exactly. and then he makes a comeback. That's what we want to achieve with Fury. Um, and then uh, when uh, came up the, the, the topic of making difficulty modes, I remember that conversation. I remember my director coming to me and saying me, Okay, maybe we should have some difficulty um, uh, levels, like so the player can choose. Um, how can we design it so it's not just uh, changing stats? And I say to him, we are going to think about that, but I'm really not. So, uh, I don't think I want to do it if we don't find a good way to do it. Right. So I came up with an idea, which was like. Okay, we have very um, complete tools. We have very, uh, very good tools on Fury to integrate things. What I would like us to do is to have one vision. Uh, it's to um, how, how to explain that. It's to have one different version of the game for each level of difficulty. So okay. there is the normal level, which is the way. This is the way we are doing like. It's the game we want the player uh, to be uh, to be facing, like the mm -hmm. normal way. Yeah, it's going to be demanding, it's going to be challenging, but it's it's something everybody can do. Mm -hmm. There is a promenade mode. It's like for people who like the game, like the aesthetic, but they are not this kind of player of action fighters, and they don't want to challenge themselves. Exactly. So this level is like we made it like very easy. And it's not like easy. It's like if you button mash, you can pass. Uh, so it's just to enjoy the, the the game visuals, but not being challenged. Right. So the, we 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 took any challenge from this mode and uh, this uh, this mode, and it's very easy to. Win. And there is the furious mode, which is uh, what we call the pattern redesign. Like we take every pattern and every attacks of every boss and every phase phase, and we redesign it. To change the visuals, to change the timings, to like to make a new, a whole, whole new game with the, the same game, in fact. Yeah. So, and so that the, that's the way we decided to do because it was uh, in the direction of the vision of the game. However, uh, we were not totally right because the normal difficulty was okay, the furious difficulty was okay, like it was um, going in the right direction and people loved it, like doing mm -hmm. launching the game and like. Oh yeah, I'm not just taking twice more damage. I'm taking the same damages, but all the patterns are different. So I have to, I have to learn the game again. Exactly. To, yeah. To, to learn it again. But people really hated the promenade mode. Like they felt um, deceived and uh, humiliated. Like, uh, like by not by, by refusing to play the the game in normal difficulty for them was like getting the punishment to play in a difficulty that was not demanding at all. Yeah. So it was, um, like, we, that's not our... What we wanted to, to achieve is to um, allow people to just play the game and enjoy it without being challenged. But people didn't like it. So uh, we, we made a mistake. And then in a patch, we, we made a correction and we... <laughs> I just remade the promo difficulty like I would have done the Furrier. It's like it was a pattern redesign, right. but in a lower difficulty. The, so that should wrap it up about your question. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Um. So, uh, were there any, uh, were there any 
de-evolutions in the combat that uh, we we don't know about, that the players don't know about, where there's some uh, sorts of mechanics that didn't make it into the game at all? Uh, no. I mean, no? there is some idea that I pushed and I wanted to be in the game, but as I said, when I arrived, the game was feature complete, most, more or less. I mean, at least on the design side, like, we knew what we would have in the game. Um, there, there is some fights that obviously changed compared to uh, their initial design. Uh, oh, but yeah. no, uh, like for example, when you were facing the scale, uh, you were supposed to, you were supposed to, to, um, to turn the map up down and make you, uh, and taking you underwater and everything would be inverted and you will, would be controlling him and he would be controlling you, for example. But this wow. is something that were killed. And I remember I pushed a lot because I wanted to be able to have a... You know, a bit like in Mega Man, when you, when you beat a boss, I wanted to be able to, um, to get his weapon, you know, and to be able to change and have different uh, way of shooting with your character. See, but uh, it was uh, strictly refused. <laughs> oh. was, no, this is something. No, I, we had a lot of idea, and I had two lot of idea, but none of them were retained because everything was feature complete. Like the game was to be like that, uh, and it was not going in the vision. The vision is make a one uh, one one control layout with uh, basic action, and what we, the vision was to try to make as much at as a depth, depthness with those simple controls, not exactly, to make it yeah. more complicated by having different weapons, no. And I think um, now uh, I'm grateful for that vision because it really allows me to go, um, like to push the patterns and the and the game possibilities at the at the maximum, like really getting like very uh, deep low in, in the design. Yeah, because it allowed you to focus on one core concept instead of multiple. If you have multiple things, you can do it, but it's gonna be it's gonna be what you you know. There is a, a balance in game design that we call uh, deep, uh, deepness uh, versus complexity. Well, most yeah. of the time, if you increase complexity, you lose in deepness. If you increase deepness, you have to sacrifice complexity. And uh, so I would say that uh, Fury is, uh, if on a scale of one to ten, like Fury is a one, to one on ten uh, complex and uh, ten on ten com um, deep. Games don't have this level of quality in their bosses anymore. Hell, some games don't even have true bosses at all and it, it's 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 a little sad to me because i love boss fights but uh you know it, visions are visions are different um so all of the uh all of the boss designs were finished when you when i uh, came on to the uh team correct mm. no there was what you mean there was like uh, the, the graphical design, like the character design was done. That was the main idea. Mm -hmm. Usually as bullet points, like explanation, but everything was on paper. I had to compose everything and to make it a fact, you know. It's like, it's like when you, um, it's like when you give me a material, you say, okay, I give you uh, one ton of, uh, of iron, uh, gold and silver. You have to do something with it. Mm -hmm. It's the same. It can take many shapes, but um, I have to to try to make the to make a fight with a initial statement, initial vision. Yeah. But uh, the thing is that the the game is boss fight centered. It's a bit like if you look like game like uh, games like Bayonetta two, for example. Right. Uh, yep. Almost half of the levels are boss level, and that's why there is such a high degree in polish in those boss. And it's the same with uh, same with God Hands or games like that. Uh, when you say there is uh, less and less games with real boss today, it's I think it's only my opinion, but it's also explained by the fact that we are in open world era. And when you have some games like Witcher or Horizon, or 
even the last Z Zelda doesn't have a real boss because um, they are not at the center of experience. They have to be able to drop any enemy in the map and it to be working. The thing is that when you are working on such a huge variety of enemies and uh, behavior, especially group behavior and uh, situations, um, you cannot invest your resources in making uh, incredible boss fight. And uh, yeah, that, that's why I said like games like Bayonetta or Metal Gear Solid they are totally at the opposite of the, of the open world era. And that, that's very visible because um, the, the, the bosses in the last Metal Gear, for example, which was an open world, uh, were yep. pretty far less uh, polished and boss like MGS like fights, you know? Yeah. So, it's yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because um, the Batman Arkham games were always praised for their uh, boss fights, and then Arkham Knight came out, and the boss fights really seemed like they were pushed to the back of uh, Rocksteady's um, priority list, and more of the, in my opinion, dreadful uh, uh, Bat Batmobile. Um, so I, I was really disappointed because some of my favorite bosses, like uh, Doctor Freeze in mm. Arkham City, the, the, they're so, so that's such a, a great fight. But then in Arkham Knight, it was mm. just really lackluster. Uh, but but both of those are open world, which is really interesting. But I feel like Rocksteady's focus was more on the Batmobile uh, with this game than anything else. And there's so also the fact that um, the Batman series, like highly oriented to its character like when you are yeah. you don't think about something else than the the villains in Batman so they had a lot of uh, of material and, and 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 good resources to make incredible bosses like exactly. they had so much character and they could just um, let their imagination like how I'm gonna put this character into a boss fight and it's the same uh, it, this is the same process we had in Fury we had character at the at the beginning they were imagined not like video game character. They were they were all imagined like characters with mm -hmm. a background, with a past, with the, uh, like for example, you are talking about Mr. Freeze, Doctor Freeze, like um, uh, Victor Freeze. The yep. guy has a, has a huge uh, background with his wife, with the fact that he's keeping her under uh, um, under uh, under glass, under a glass to to try to to cure her, things like that. It was the same with the bosses of Fury. They all had a huge background uh, that allows us to make very good boss fights. And that's why I think you're right. Like when they made uh, Arkham Knight, uh, it was, uh, this is the open world era. They wanted to make an open world and it's very hard to, to focus on the characters and on the, on the boss fight when you're doing such a wide game. There's so much to do and yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I think like you, I think it's... Uh, it's a shame that they couldn't uh, focus on bosses again. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, so, um, for me, when I first played the game, when I first played Fury, there was... Uh, okay, so, the first boss is the chain, and then and then the strap. You, you know this, obviously. But then comes the line. And uh, when you guys nailed down the... Uh, when you guys nailed down the dif difficulty that we've played with um, in QA test, did you did you see that there was the difficulty spike at the line? Is, yes. Is, is that yeah yeah uh, yeah? And that's when that was one of the factor that made us realize that the problem of the game is not its difficulty, but the thing that people were not understanding. Why? Because line was very hard, very very rough to to beat for playtester. Yeah. So the first uh, the first few times was like, okay, it's too hard. Let's try to nerf it a bit to, to make it easier. So I, so I went on uh, yeah, on my on on the game engine and just reduced the HPs of the boss, reduced um, the the damage he was doing, reduced the HPs of the of the pillars. And we, and we stated no difference at all. Because the problem with that bus is not that he's hard. The problem is that uh, he's, he's pushing exotic mechanics that the player never saw before. Yeah. Uh, and he's uh, forcing you to do some stuff that if you didn't master them, you're not going to pass. And for example, if you don't know how to parry an attack against this boss, yep. 
if you're not used to, to parry, you're never going to find that you have to parry to stop the time, to freeze it. Um, yeah, so the problem with that boss is mostly uh, the fact that you have to understand how it works. You have to understand that you have to, to break the pillars, you have to understand that you have to be patient, you have to understand that you have to block his attack, and then you have to understand that you cannot use projectiles, you know, and it's like the, the, the life, the HP he has for, the, for a phase is equivalent to a, a normal boss. The just is, uh, one phase is like um, split in like f two or three different phases. Yeah. So it, yeah, the, the problem is that it's compre is uh, to understand how the boss works. It's totally not about um, difficulty because the boss in itself, it, when you understand, it's quite easy. This was not this was not the same uh, issue with uh, with the burst. With the burst, it was a purely difficulty, but this was intentional. Yeah. No. Yeah. Th that makes sense uh, because yeah, the line is or uh, yeah, the line. I'm sorry, the line is the first boss that you see with just the entire screen is just filled with projectiles, and that like in. When I first played it, in my mind, I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is this is insane! I don't know what's going on." But as as I learned with it, as I learned with the fight, that that that's how you that's how I got better at it. Um, and I, I love that I love that fight so much now. I went back to it and I actually beat it on my first try. And I was like, "Oh man, I was I was dreading, I was dreading coming back to this fight because I was like, oh no, this this is it. This is." This is going to be hard. This is like the hardest boss. But then I was so in tune with the game uh, and everything going on, and things were just clicking with me. And I was like, "Oh yes, this this is what I love. This fight is so good." And I, I ended up beating him on my first try, which was crazy. And oh, if, man. if I had to make some um, changes, if I had to to work on this boss again and make some changes, I would change. I would work on a. Um, on the feedbacks and how the player can understand what's going on and how, what is uh, what uh, we were waiting for him to do, because uh, yeah, this is the real problem is for us to make the player to understand how to beat him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so the hand was the first boss that was introduced to you, correct? Yes. That's right. it. Yeah. Okay. So um, I, I wanted to talk about this because this is the first. Uh, this was the first boss. Um, maybe not the first boss in the game that uh, you you could understand uh, his backstory, but it was definitely, I feel, the most involved that we got as players with his backstory when we saw his son uh, come up. Was this? Um, was this possibly like? Did you want to instill the same, uh, the same feeling that Shadow of the Colossus had, where you kind of felt bad for beating this guy up? Well, the game is cut in two parts. It's not from me. It's from my uh, director, of course. Mm -hmm. There is this very first boss who is torturing you. He's beating you up. He has a very. He, his, his face is masked. Like he has no. Um, he's not like a human. He's a machine. He's a killing machine. Right, I love that design so much. The, 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 the only thing you want to do with this guy is to beat him up. It's to to kill him. Like, why why not? He, he, he's treating you like shit. He's, he's beating you and say that he's going to torture you for forever. <laughs> yeah. So when you pierce it with your sword, you're like, okay, I'm the good one, this guy. I'm gonna, this guy this guy's a bastard. I'm just going to get away with my rabbit friend. Then you arrive yeah, in that right. in, in that prison in the prison like with the strap. She's crazy. Like she, she's yeah. an, almost an animal. Like she, what what's wrong with her? I mean, you, you you have to beat her. Like there is no way. There is no way you are doing anything else. Like there is no way to reason with her. Then you exactly. get to you get to the wise, and things mm -hmm. begins to change. This guy is here to stop you. He's not here to kill you, but he's gonna stop you. Yeah. But sti still, you're you're still like convinced that you have to. That's the right thing to do. You have to, to beat him. Mm -hmm. Then you get to the scale, and the scale is corrupted, mad, like crazy. To he, he just wants revenge from you. So there is no reason not to beat him. And then you get to the to the end, which is the middle of the game, and that's where you want the player to begin to understand that 
uh, I don't know, how do you say in English like uh, the notion of good and bad? It's like uh, manichaeism. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, that in everything uh, there is no good or evil. It's world is not manichaeist. Like there is just uh, some point of views. There is sides. Exactly. Uh, and in the and and the initial statement usually is you the side you're gonna you're gonna part of. It's like the the story of the red and the black uh, ants. Mm-hmm. You're gonna be for the side that uh, you, you begin with. Like I, I mean, I'm French. Why I wouldn't be with France? But exactly. if you are if you are politically taking into account all what France is doing around, it's not always very white. You know, it's, it can be a bit harsh. Mm-hmm. I mean. Well, what I mean is that there is different interests and there is different way of seeing things, but there is never a bad or a good. And this story yeah. is also saying, um, trying to make people think what it's come to to get themselves into a fight. Is it? Uh, we want them to think like, finally, is it? Uh, am I fighting for something right? Is it the right thing to fight? So it gets to the end and things begin to 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 change. You you understand that he captured you. And he's going to try to stop you again to protect people because he wants to protect his his people, his son and and, and his his people. Exactly. Then that's the moment you go to the song and you get to a consensus. You have a, you have a choice to make. You can stay with her if you want. Yep. You you can go to the statue quo and say, okay, uh, I state that. Um, what I did until the, uh, uh, I, I'm a danger and I don't want to uh, go further into the fight, so I'm going to put it to hand. I'm going to stay with her. So we can yeah. Or you can try to proceed and say, mm-hmm. "No, that's the right thing to do. I have to fight," and you go to fight her. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> that that was the first time uh, when I came back. That was the first time I died. I was like, I completely underestimated her. I completely forgot about it. And I went to fight super confident, and that was the first time I died. And I was like, oh my gosh. I and completely forgot about her. And then the more you progress the game, and the man, the more you are facing those characters that had their, their own motives and that are showing mm-hmm. you that you may not be on the right, on the, uh, there may not be a good or, uh, there may not be good or evil in this world. There's this you and right. other people's motives. And at the very end, you get to these girls. She is like the, she's the, she's the lamb, in fact, with the, with the mm-hmm. wolf. You are the wolf. She's the lamb. Yep. Uh, she's very young. She's very passionate. In she wants to protect her world. That's why other guardians put her as the last one because uh, they don't want her to fight. She's too weak, and they are like, mm-hmm. he's never, he's mostly never gonna get to her. But okay, we give you a place in the in the chain. You can be at the at the at the last resort. Right. But too bad for her because you you get to her, and she of course she's no match for who for you. She's too inexperienced. She's too young. Yeah. And, um, she's too idealistic. So mm-hmm. so that's why the, the fight is uh, intentionally so easy to to to, to beat. Uh, and most exactly. people and most people were like, oh, the game ends like this. It's like they had this feeling of unsatisfaction. And then you get to the uh, to the um, to the epilogue, and you yes. understand uh, all what is it about. And that's the moment you can do the really last choice. Oh yeah! Like now that we you get all the keys to understand the plot, who you are, who the other are, mm-hmm. which side are you gonna? Are you gonna take part? Are you gonna take part to, to your, your kind, like extraterrestrial, like because uh, you you feel like uh, what they are doing is fair, like you're trying to survive, trying to to invade others to survive, uh, or right. or simply because you are one of them, and for you being one, uh, having people of your own kind is is a great value, it's possible, or you decide you decide to stay that okay, uh, I think this is bad, and I'm gonna put an end to this. Yeah, right, exactly. So you were talking about, or uh, you briefly referenced the burst a little bit, um, and yeah. how the uh, the faults within her during development was all in the difficulty. My question behind that was, uh, 
With her, you have her uh, minions, uh, quote unquote, the minions that uh, follow you around the, uh, the mm-hmm. map, and then yes. her sniper. Uh, so, what what was that like? What was the ideal behind her? The burst. All right. As I said, each guardian has totally different motive to fight you, mm-hmm. but like totally different. And there is uh, one the song that want to avoid fighting you, like she's giving you an option. There is the one that is going to fight you, whatever it takes. But for me, there is two very special guardians. There is the burst and there is the edge. Yes. Those very the two guardians. The best. Those two guardians are very special because they are not fighting at all for others. They are very selfish. They are fighting for a motive of themselves. Exactly. Um, burst. Uh, she's a she's a she's a prime hunter. I mean, it's her archetype. Mm-hmm. That's right. a game for her. She's she's baiting you in her trap. It's fun for her to set up a trap, like to get you to to to, to her play to her playground where she's at. She she gets the advantage because she can uh, modulate the form of it. She can call the, the her minion. She can uh, she can um, she, she has even an AI that is looking at you. You know when she. You are arriving. It's analyzing you. It's checking uh, your vital uh, processors. It's checking uh, the the material of your saber. It's getting information. She has exactly. much more information on you that you haven't heard. So she has the tactical information on you. She has the ta- she has the um, the place of fighting, and and uh, she has a, a big equipment to fight you. She, as I said, she has an AI. Like for example, if you if you pay attention. Um, when she flees, you are, you can hear the AI sometimes saying uh, uh, "target lost, relocating." You know, Th- it means that there is an AI that is in those world checking at any moment where you are. That's why she's able to find you at any moment. Right. So yeah, okay. she, she's this this um, person fighting for fun because it's a game, and but she's also a very bad player because for her it's impossible to lose. She cannot lose, and and uh, it's not an option. Losing is not yeah, an option for her. She even says uh, at the end of the boss fight, uh, no, nobody said we had to play fair, and then that—that's when she closes you in. Yeah. I find that moment super special. So this is a kind of uh, uh, this is a selfish behavior, but there is the other one, the edge. Him is My here to fight. is here to fight you, but he's not here mm-hmm. to fight you to stop you. He's not here to. To buy, beat you is here to face you. He just wants to f- to fight and give his very best. Uh, is this uh, archetype of the of the samurai, the one that is uh, playing for pride and honor, not for winning? What uh, he's been training all his life, he's waiting for you. He wants to face you, and whatever is the the issue, whatever is I mean the the result, for him it's it's fine, it's good. He's just gonna give the best. Right. Yeah, so there is two, those two very special guardians that are um, acti- acting out of selfishness. I don't know why. I don't know if it's the reason why we made them uh, in difficulty, like, way higher than the other ones. But I think, like, uh, ind- indirectly, um, it, 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 it pushed us to make this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so... The Edge, okay. The Edge is is hands down my favorite boss in the entire game. I, uh, I, I, I just want to know, what was the idea behind him? How did his fighting style uh, come into play? Was it always supposed to be just straight, just a straight melee combat, the close quarter feel? Was it always that? Uh, it was supposed to, um, you know... To have the maximum of var- variety in the game, uh, we made the, the we made each boss having a, a percentage of um, of use of features. Like for example, um, the the chain it's like 50 50, 50 melee, fifty uh, remote range. Exactly. Uh, the song, for example, she's a uh, rather like eighty uh, percent shooting, twenty uh, percent uh, melee. For example, well, yep. we we had to have the the extreme the extreme. Um, Opposite, like we had this um, this bot which is like 100 percent melee, and it, and it takes imp- inspiration of two main things. Uh, so first, there is the, the the gameplay of Punch Out because it's extremely close to Punch Out, but you know it's yeah. a, a 3D Punch Out. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. But also, uh, this boss is a reference and, um, and an easter egg, I would say, uh, uh, about uh, a 90s games like uh, 2D fighters, like Street Fighter 2, for example. Yeah. When oh, we yeah, especially we wanted, when the perspective changes. Yes, we wanted to give the, this feeling. I think we didn't succeed too much because the controls are so different that you don't clearly see the reference. Like right. it, we would have needed to put a jump and some quarter circle manipulation <laughs> to make it more. Uh, I mean, but it, it's too exotic. Like it was not possible to. Yeah. That's what I would have loved to do. But <laughs> so yeah, there is like the 2D fighter of 90s and uh, Super Punch Out, a uh, very big um, inspiration for that boss. Yes. Oh man, uh, the Edge is. It, it's one of my favorite bosses of all time. Just uh, the music during the fight. Just everything is. Perfect. I, I, I always preferred the uh, the close quarter combat stuff, the hand to hand melee combat over uh, the range. But so the edge, the edge was perfect. So, uh, what was your favorite boss? What was your favorite boss to work on? A working on? You mean uh, which one I prefer to work or the one uh, I prefer to beat? Uh, both. We'll do both. So, in Fury mode, my favorite boss to beat is. This would be. It's yeah. a hard question. Yeah, this yeah. game is just full of great bosses. Uh, it would it would be definitely the the wise. Um, sorry, not the it's not called the wise. In the, it's uh, the line. Line, yes. Yeah. And in Furia mode, my favorite one is the chain, because the one that has the the, the most that looks much more different than uh, his normal version because he's teleporting everywhere. He's very fucking fast. Yeah. Yeah. And um, for development, uh, yeah, it's, the one I prepared, uh, my favorite one to develop was uh, Fury or the Chain. Fury has the best soundtrack of any game ever, in my opinion. Of all time. Okay, like, uh, it, it, I believe it was that summer, uh, 2016, when I first started to get into Synthwave, and then I realized that there's this new game coming out, and it's produced uh, by Danger, Carpenter, Brut, uh, Wave Shaper, all of that jazz. So, um, I, I, I've got to ask, how was it working with those guys? Uh, was it was it back and forth? Was the uh, was the song or did the songs um, were the songs made? After the combat and the bosses were done to fit with those, or was the music done before the bosses? The very first uh, two songs were the, the very first song was the one of the end. It was composed by Carpenter Brut at the moment. They were doing the they were doing the fake gameplay footage. So they have been working hand to hand together. When my director and his team, when I was not here yet. With Carpenter Brut, and he made it stick perfectly. Um, that guy is so good. Then he made the music of Strap too. Mm -hmm. But after that, uh, all the, the all, all the music we, we made, I mean they made, uh, were based on uh, what on my work. Like I was always making uh, at least the first work version of the boss, so they could see how we're working the loops because. I don't know if you if you check the the making of of the game, but there is one episode uh, for the music, and Carpenter Brut is expressing the fact that the problem with video game music is that you cannot know what the player is going to exactly do. So yeah. you have to make loops that are going to be able to uh, match with each other and to change at any moment without it to be uh, rough and not nice to hear. Uh, so they were looking how my boss my boss fight was working the loops and they were making loops for every moment with crossfade and transition to, to fit with them um, and all that work is not from me this work is uh, incredible work 
uh, made by my director. That's one of the things I think is the best art. Like I was uh, very uh, looking up to him for the capacity he has to uh, communicate these kind of things. But he was taking my fights and he was making some very clear and, and good brief, briefing videos for the artists so they could exactly know uh, how the fight. Because usually when you are working in video games, what Carpenter Brut was saying is like most of the time you are asked to compose something but you have no image of the game. You know nothing about the game. Exactly. Yeah. It can also be the same. It can also be the same when you are dub doubling games, you know, like you have some things to say, but you have no Im uh, no image of the game. Like you, you cannot put yourself in this. Um, here, my director made one video for each, even sometimes more for each um, composer to send for the boss they were assigned to and how it's working, uh, the kind of inspiration of music you would like to see, um, all the detail that they needed to, to give this boss a personality, like a, a musical uh, a personality. Right. So, yeah. for most yeah. of, I think it worked pretty well for all of them. Like, uh, so some better than others, of course, it depends. Mm -hmm. But you also have to know that we didn't work only with those artists. Like, there were other artists, famous ones that we were working with, but um, we couldn't match with them like it was not the, the it was not working you know what i mean there's some yeah. people you can work on, on that way some people that are not doesn't mean they are not good just mean that they, they they don't work this way and so we ended up not working with them in the end mm -hmm. yeah i mean oh man my, my favorite my favorite track in the game uh I, I'll admit it's not even it's not even during a boss fight. Uh, it's when you're walking. Um, it's one of the mm. walking sessions. Uh, it's a picture in motion by Wave Shaper. Oh, uh, I, I that that's my favorite track in the game because it, the the bass hits right when the camera switches and you're like walking along the side. Uh, and I, I noticed that too was uh, there were those loops. The, the loops that would play, but it, it never sounded um, artificial. It always sounded genuine. And then there was that trigger in the uh, in the level, and then the <laughs> bass start hit starts to yeah. hit, and it, everything sounds good. And then Lorne, Lorne's tracks during the scale, uh, it, it it fits the atmosphere of that lo locale so well. Yeah. Uh, and and that, again, that's because I think my director has an incredible capacity to to find a good person to to do things. Like uh, for me, he found the best per. He came with the statement like we are going to do a, a boss fight game. A boss fight game is based on his character. We have to get one of the best character designer in the game. He went to Takashi for that. Um, really? And, yeah. He wouldn't have. He told me that he wouldn't have done the game if you couldn't find the proper character designer to render those characters. And same with the music. When he when he had a boss, like I have to find the perfect artist to to fit with that boss, you know. And Lone was was really perfect for the scale. As yes. some other were perfect from for others of them, but he has this this very good skill to just find the right person to do the right task. Yeah, exactly. I, what was it? Uh, Danger uh, on five five three. I believe that's the song for the the chain. Um, yeah, or, that that song is just unbelievable too. Uh, everything everything about the music in this game accompanies uh, what what you what you're seeing on screen so perfectly, so flawlessly, and I, I feel like that that is something that games nowadays don't really hit as well. Uh, I I will say the last time that I felt that invested into a soundtrack uh, of any game was The Last of Us with uh, Gustavo Santaiolo. Uh, uh, man, I, I just see that last, that last see, This is an excellent soundtrack. I'm sorry? This is an excellent song, soundtrack. It, uh, this is very, it's going totally in the vision of the game and it's also uh, explained yeah. because this guy uh, uh, used to live in a, in a fascist uh, government, like I mean, in a dictature. He even went. This guy even went to prison. I, I saw something about him, and his music really um, express uh, the, the, this feeling. This feeling of um, 
kind of hope, a bit sorrow and sadness at the same, uh, and it was perfect. It was perfect for Left of Us. Exactly, it was incredible because you had those those single strings, but every every strum of the guitar was just reverberated so perfectly throughout the environment and the uh, story of that game. It, it was just oh my god, I haven't felt that emotion through a game just just simply through the music uh, I, ever. Um, yeah. And then, and then Fury comes out and just blows me away. Ah, the music, ah, man, I could I could go on about the music for so long. Well, uh, it, it's great. You will be happy to uh, learn that uh, at the at the release of the game, we, we uh, I mean we my <laughs> my um, my CEO <laughs> she, she organized a big concert in Paris for. Uh, for the for the reason, so there was a. Yeah, but there, there is some uh, pictures in the making up of the game too. It was a very good party. Oh, I believe it, man. I I, I believe it. So, what, what's your favorite track in the game? Uh, are, are you a fan of synthwave? Are you a fan of this stuff? Uh, not. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm sensitive to electro music in general, but I see. Yeah. I discovered synthwave really with Fury. The thing is yeah. that my favorite track. Uh, I, I have. Yeah, uh, I I think I uh, I really like uh, Your Mind, of Carpenter Brut. I really like um, um, What We Fight For, yep. of Carpenter Brut. I really like also uh, the, the 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 track of um, of the of the line, especially the the last one, the the fury the fury moment, which is. Like, like when this tempo is accelerating uh, at the last phase of the fight. This is amazing. Um, yep. th- those are my three favorites. But I, I would, I, it would be fa- faster for me to tell you what's, which one is the one I like, uh, I like the less, in fact. Uh, oh, wow. The, the, because I, I really I like them all. Like the only one that I, uh, I don't listen too much is the one of Lorne. It goes. Uh, it, uh, this goes very well with the fight, but it's not something that I could uh, listen. Listen to exactly. It, it's yeah. It's much more atmospheric. But this is uh, his style. Huh? Sales-wise, were you guys ever concerned about? Uh, Sending this game out for free on a platform um, that you knew a bunch of people would have downloaded the game uh, for free on. Uh, were you guys ever like? What was the process of that? How did you guys determine? Uh, oh yeah, let's let's make this. Let's work with Sony here and make this um, a game that will launch with PlayStation Plus. Well. I don't have the answer of this question because every time I ask this kind of question, I get the, the I get the same answer of my director, which which tells me, don't don't bother yourself with that. Just do what you are good at. We take care of the rest. Yeah. And this is pretty fine for me. The only thing that I know is that the deal we had with PlayStation in this game was a good deal. It was fair. Yes, it was like, a good deal. Our, our game was certainly, um, yes, free on the PlayStation Plus platform. Mm-hmm. But, it, but first, they, they, they helped us a lot for the development of the game. I cannot say exactly uh, how much they gave us, but it was significant. Yeah. Um, plus, it was a very good, um, very good um, uh, way to advertise about the game. Like they, were, they pushed us a lot. Uh, so the sure. people get to know the game. Um, plus all the backup they they gave us for uh, for development for developing on their platform things like that. Mm-hmm. So uh, I mean I can say for sure that everybody at Game Baker is very satisfied with the collaboration with Sony, and in, this is something that could happen again if uh, if, if the the chance comes. I think. Absolutely. And because uh, to be so honest, it, it really pre- went pretty smooth. Even at the end, like uh, they were satisfied, we were satisfied. Uh, oh yeah. This was a very good collaboration. For sure. 
Absolutely. Um, so, uh, with the the Nintendo Switch version just released, correct? Just like two months ago, yes. Yeah, right. How was that? How was working with Nintendo? And uh, do you have a Switch yourself? Are you? Yeah. Do you, yeah. <laughs> we don't really work with Nintendo. You know, you are you are just an editor, and you are we, you just contact them. They check who you are. You get your development kit, and that's all. They take a, they take a percentage on what you are selling on their platform. So. No, we didn't work really directly with Nintendo. We decided to port our game on the platform. This is uh, mm-hmm. this is trendy, you know, nowadays. Everybody wants oh, yeah. to get to Switch. Uh, the thing is that for long we did like we were thinking about it since the the, the Switch was kind of uh, announced. Uh, the thing is that we were we were. I mean, we my director were to be sure that it was possible. So he sent uh, our technical director to check on the specs and is it going to be able to release the game the game on Switch and 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 keep a um, a frame a, a correct frame rate? Right. When I say correct, I mean uh, close to the one we have on PS4, which right. is uh, which is like 30 uh, FPS to 40 FPS, which is fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so at the beginning, I remember it was like, no, we are not doing it. And we, are, and we were working on another project, okay. but uh, after a test and things like they said, mm, this we should dig in, dig into this and try to do. It. So, um, as I said, our technical director uh, worked on it uh, on part time checking uh, uh, on a Unity version uh, ded- dedicated to to switch how to develop on it. If it's what are the constraints, things like that. So lots of documentation and shits and other shits. Uh, yeah. The things like uh, we made a first port of the game running on Switch. Uh, the, the performances were catastrophic. Yeah, I heard it was but, a very bumpy road. But um, our uh, our technical director he was positive that it would be certainly possible by optimizing things. Mm-hmm. So they went through a pass of optimizing. On my side, I was like, no, you are not touching anything. Uh, you work on the next project now. Uh, the thing is that after all optimization, we are, like we, we earned a lot of frames per second. Like if we were to push those change on, a, on, the, on the PS4 version, we did on PC version because it's easy, but on PS4 version 2, like people will, would gain like a lot of frames per second. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing is that at the end it was hard to make any further uh, optimization in the in the, the windows in the, the time frame we we, we uh, allocated to the project. So uh, I remember I was always telling my my director, you know, if it's a problem with the performances, I can go back on the patterns and make them uh, uh, less fluffy. Try to to make. Them, Try to, 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 to remove some of them and spare performances. And he was always saying, We will see, we will see. Huh? And one day he comes up and he says, Okay, can you maybe make a test on uh, one of the bosses that have a performances issue? I remember it was, uh, it was uh, the, the line. Mm-hmm. No, no, it was, sorry, no. It was uh, the, uh, the chain. And I said, Okay. Okay. So I took most of the patterns and I'm and I reduced the number of projectiles, but by being very careful to keep the exact same challenge, you know. Exactly. That, yeah. And that's uh, as it was working. That's what we did on any other bosses. But um, yeah, it took me something like three months full time to do it. Wow. Yeah. Because uh, not because it was hard to do, but because I had to constantly uh, make, for example, a change. Build it on the switch, check the performances on the switch until I found you know the exact right uh, um, dose. Like, uh, is it? Uh, can, can I? Uh, should I get rid of more projectile? Uh, can I add a, a bit more of them? To, yeah. So it was like um, it was a pattern redesign again. Like if I would make a Furrier mode, but I did it for every kind, uh, level of difficulty, like Promenade, Fury, and Furrier. And it was not about redesigning the challenge; it was about redesigning the the fluffiness, if I if I shall say. Right. 
Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah that, that's really interesting. I've still got to get my hands on a Switch. Um, man, I, 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 I've got to get one. Well, now. it's a very good version. You should try it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, for sure, man. Like, I, I, yesterday I was talking to my uh, friend about uh, Fury. I was like, yeah, I got, the, I got the, this interview tomorrow. I'm super excited. And he was like, oh, I've never played Fury. And I was like, okay, come on now. This, this has got to change. So I went and bought the game for him. I, I was like, okay, there you go. Now, now, now you can play. Have you, have you played um, the, the downloadable content? No, I haven't. But right after this, I'm going to go and buy it, I swear. I swear. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, h how, how do you feel about the current landscape of games? Um, with, with like, uh, this, it, it, it's, it's crazy to say, but after four years of the, uh, the PS4, I feel like it's just now kind of hit its stride. We're just now getting its, uh, the, the, the meat of this generation. So, h how do you feel about the current landscape of games right now? <laughs> Can you uh, try to um, again precise a bit your question? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, just how um, are are you content with how uh, with how game how far games have come and uh, how people play games nowadays and how people respond to them? Um, do you find it uh, much more rewarding now? Um, I, 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 even you could you could even answer this as uh, a non-developer. It's just a, a, a gamer, somebody that plays games. Do you like? Do you like it? Uh, do you feel good um, where we are right now with video games? Well, I think, despite what all uh, frustrated gamer could say, like the video game field has never been so rich nowadays. There is so much ex different experience you can you you can just play. Um, there's game for everything. For there's game for everybody. There is masterpiece in any kind of, of, of in a, in any kind of game. Like there is not a single um, game type that uh, doesn't have its own masterpiece. And yeah, it's never been so rich. Uh, I, to, nowadays, I can make my mother and my girlfriend play to some... And, and, and <laughs> when I say play, right. it's not make them play to a shitty game. Like it's, I can <laughs> yeah. make them play very good game in which they are going to have fun. And that, uh, exactly. Uh, Fury is a very small part of the whole specter of what you can find in terms of experience. Uh, this is a game for a particular target, and you are fine with that. Because on myself, I'm not doing. I'm rarely playing the game, the kind of game of Fury. I, I play rather the the close the closest experience than Fury I could find that, that I really played seriously were like versus fighting games because you have to try hard and to get better mm -hmm. and to, um, to 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 and uh, World of Warcraft on PVO side like uh, work oh, yeah. battling bosses, uh, getting to know the strategy and how to react. Uh, but in general, that's not the kind of game I'm playing. I'm playing very various games every day, like they, like um, in, in the last few years. There's a lot of games that I love that were like totally not related to sure. Like for example, oh, yeah. Life is Strange or um, The Last of Us is one uh, um, is definitely the, the top ten of my best game of all time. Yeah, for sure. It's it's never been so rich. Like today, even as a game developer, if today. I want to to work work with a team on a game that I like, which is the promise I made myself. Yeah, I have only the embarrass of choice. There's so many companies that are doing very interesting projects. Like, of course, in some company or project that I don't like, and that uh, mm -hmm. I wouldn't, uh, or uh, I don't, I don't, uh, or uh, I mean, um, uh, like there's some company I don't like the philosophy. Like I'm not gonna quote any one of them, but uh, and there's yeah. some other ones that I don't like the, the game they are doing. But even with that, like there's so much good games and and things you can work on that you, you can just you, you have so many options. So for me, this is a very this is the golden age of video game for me. For the yeah, yeah, I was I was gonna say the same exact thing. I mean, last year alone was absolutely incredible like it, it it's uh it's brought out two of my favorite games ever made and possibly my favorite game of all time uh 
Prey came out last huh. year. I love that game. Uh, and then Yakuza 0 uh, came out last year as well. I mean, uh, so what, 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 did you, what was your game of the year last year, I suppose? What was your favorite game that you played last year? Last year, what, what was the, the, the year? It was 2017. 2017, yep. Uh, which game? I'm going to tell you. Let, let me think just a minute. Yeah, yeah, go for Let it. Let me open my Steam library. Yeah, there you go. Um, if you tell me 2016, uh, it's Fury. But uh, oh, yes. I accepted Fury, I would say it's Street Fighter V. Oh. Uh, but on this year right now... Jeez. Fury, Fury, uh, I'll admit, Fury was my runner-up for Game of the Year 2016. Well, thanks. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're, um, you're welcome. Uh, but uh, my favorite game of 2016 was uh, The Witness. Oh, yes, of course, I know which one. Uh, stupid. It's that, no, it's... Uh, that's one of my this favorite is, uh, games my, my fa No, I know which game. <laughs> it's Zelda Breath of the Wild, of course. The, the what? No, Zelda, the last Zelda was uh, was rad. Oh, Breath of the Wild. I know everybody didn't like it, but it was really a really good experience for me. Like, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna remember it forever. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. Have you played uh, Nier Automata? Yeah, and uh, this is not. I mean, I I, I nailed the game. Like, if I finish all the or, I mean all the main uh, the main uh, scenarios like. Uh, I made uh, so I finished the game four or five times, or something like that. Again, oh yeah. Uh, but uh, and uh, I, I really love the the vision of the director, um, his universe, um, the story. I love like everything in that game. But there is only one one thing that spo that spoiled it for me is that. <laughs> uh, I don't like the philosophy on their combat gameplay. Like um, I like it. But the fact that you can uh, use a potion, you can have 99 potion and use it during the fights whenever you want, uh, it ruined my I game see. experience. I never felt in danger. Um, right. So, right. so I, fi I finally came. Out, like I, I, I have the feeling. It's strange because if you tell me I'm gonna give you near automata, but you, I, I will get rid of the open world. I mean, mm -hmm. the, it's a little open world, it's open world. Like, I'm going to make yeah. a Bayonetta yeah. game with it, like uh, in which you are going to spend more time doing actually real thing than just running. Uh, right. I would put it um, very easily uh, top, top of my game of last year, you know? Yeah. Just the thing that uh, I had the, the, the feeling with that game that there was the director vision to make something and there was the, also the um, the marketing vision <laughs> to do something mm -hmm. because uh, this, you know it was made by Platinum Game but it was a comment for Square Enix it was a right. yeah so um, uh, and there, there is those kind of two visions that are clashing and it's, kind of, it's a bit visible um, so it spoiled a bit uh, but the game is amazing I mean uh, yeah it's really good yeah but uh, I was very, I, I mean, I, I had a very big expectation to it, and uh, I ended up being a bit disappointed. But it's only, no, my, yeah, only I, my opinion, of course. No, yeah, absolutely. I, when, I, uh, when I mentioned the prey, I, I heard a laugh, and I, I, I don't know if that was a good thing or not. Uh, oh, no, no, it's because, no, it's because uh, in fact, you know, when I was in school, I used to work with a, with a guy who... With who I was really bonded, uh, and we we, we 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 kept contact. Like we are seeing very uh, very often because uh, now we are living in the, in the same country uh, as, yeah. as expats. And right now he's working. Um, I, I, and this guy is uh, is crazy about prey. <laughs> and the thing, uh, and if you want to know, right now he's working CD project on Cyberpunk. And, uh, I, I I didn't know Prey, and I remember I, I downloaded it because of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's it's pretty crazy. Uh, like Prey, 
it's, it's either it's either you played it and you don't talk about it, or you play it and you talk about it all the damn time. <laughs> and I am I, I'm I'm on the latter. Prey is Prey is one of my favorite games ever. Uh, and if you've ever if you get the chance to play it, do it. Um, I don't. Uh, I, I didn't know. It's good now. I, I did it. Oh. Oh, you have played it. Yeah, it's a good game, but this is a, it didn't it didn't light any any flame in my little heart. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! <laughs> uh, yeah, Resident Evil Seven came out last year. I love that. Um, Assassin's Creed Origins, I thought was I thought was really good. Yeah, uh, I agree. It's uh, it's uh, it's the first Assassin's Creed that made me have very good time since the second one. I would say. Yeah, it's, they they really put an emphasis on the world, and that I really really appreciated that. Yeah. The world in that game is absolutely incredible. And they put a little emphasis on Dark Souls, I think too. Oh yeah, well yeah, everything you know, everything. Oh, I, I'm, I'm trolling a bit. I'm just. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everything nowadays is Dark Souls. Uh, like Mario Odyssey, it might as well be Dark Souls, you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I would have said uh, Zelda, the last one is uh, also a bit like uh, Dark Souls. Uh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Zelda's like Dark Souls, Dang and Rampa is yeah, like Dark Souls. You die all the time, it's like that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, uh, I, my, my final question to you, you got uh, it. answer this to the best of your ability. Um, you, you see, you, <laughs> obviously, you, you have some parameters. Uh, the, what you can or cannot talk about, but what does the future for the game bakers look like? Well, <laughs> working on something. I'm excited. And I would you, say, you got me. but uh, and uh, this is uh, I'm going to say what is known because of course my director is giving a lot of interview. Yeah. I'm just kind of repeat what he's saying. We're working on something. Um, but don't expect it to be close to Fury, because we want to con we want to con it's we want to continue to surprise uh, our, our audience. So mm -hmm. don't wait for something close to Fury. It's going to be something totally different. That is a okay with me. Anything you guys put out, I will be there day <laughs> one. I, I I will be there, and I will push I will push for your guys's games to be bought. Uh, you guys, you guys with Fury have left such an imprint uh, on me. I, I I talk about Fury all the time. Uh, it's it's a game that whenever uh, discussions come up about games, I'm always like, so have you have you played Fury? And then uh, they, they they kill me every time by saying no, and I'm like. You're 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 a disgusting human being. You know, you gotta go play this game. See this? It's, no, it's just that. You know, as I said, the gaming environment is so rich nowadays that yeah. I, I know um, even some. There is some people that are playing games, and sometimes I ask them, for example, if they know The Witcher, and some doesn't, and it's very famous for it's an excellent game. It's extremely famous. What I mean is, there is, it's like in cinema today, there is so much thing that most of the things you are talking about to someone, the, the majority of time you wouldn't have played it or wouldn't have heard about it, because there is too much, and this is also a, a problem uh, in the video game industry, like, we have to get visibility and to be able to to uh, continue doing what we do, we need to, to sell enough our product, uh, but... On my, on my opinion, at least on my side, I'm very satisfied uh, uh, of how Fury uh, has been sold and the notoriety it has. Like, I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't expect it to be, to be so successful. Really, yeah. Yeah, man. I, I, I do, going back on the PlayStation Plus thing, I do really see that I, that, that helped you guys out a lot, I'm sure. Uh, just publicity wise yeah oh yeah that, that's uh, I mean uh, that, that, that's how I found out about it and I'm I'm glad I did I am so glad I did thank thank you so much uh, thank you so much for uh, allowing me to uh, talk with you um, it's it's been a pleasure I really really appreciate this uh, theory has had um, an impact on me. Like, like I said, whenever I have the chance to bring up the game, I do. 
Well, thanks a lot. It's uh, it's very uh, I'm very touched.